Hey, what up, Dodgers Nation? Doug McCain here. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at DMAC underscore LA. JT is headed to Boston. We're going to break it down and tell you why the Dodgers didn't bring back JT, why he didn't re-sign with LA, how much will it impact the team. We've got all that coming up in just a second. But quick reminder for all latest Dodgers news and rumors all offseason long. Be sure to hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell, and if you want to see us post even more Dodgers content, smash that like button. And as always, I want your takes down below in the comment section what is your reaction to justin turner signing with the boston red sox will the dodgers regret not re-signing jt and also describe jt's career with the dodgers in three words or less drop that down below and for all latest dodgers news head over to dodgersnation.com we've got some big breaking news to get into justin turner is signing with the boston red sox no more jt in la it was for First reported by June Lee of ESPN.com, who tweeted out, third baseman Justin Turner and the Boston Red Sox are in agreement on a contract, sources tell me, and Jeff Passan. Turner, 38, is expected to spend most of his time at designated hitter or first base with Rafael Devers at third. Turner had been a Dodger for the last nine years. Now, there were some conflicting reports about the terms of the deal, but the Athletics Ken Rosenthal, he reported that Turner will earn 15 million in 2023 and then 7.7 million in 2024 if he exercises his player option another 1 million is available to Turner in incentive bonuses in 2023 as he can unlock a series of $200,000 in bonuses if he reaches at least 480 plate appearances so you're talking about a deal that's upwards of 22 23 million dollars if he hits those incentives if he picks up that player option and that was my first First big question is did he get that multi-year deal he was after did he sign that contract that would take him up to his age 40 season and the answer is yes and what I say at the beginning of free agency even though some people want to say he's washed and that JT is cooked he still is a productive hitter even at this age even entering his age 38 season he's coming off a year where he had a 123 WRC plus and that's after a very slow start to the season where frankly he was just bad at the plate his first 243 plate appearances he posted a 611 OPS first two months he really struggled especially against high velocity pitching just wasn't able to get very much going and then towards the end of June he started to wake up of course he hits those two home runs off of Joe Musgrove his son after the game Musgrove had the audacity to say that JT wasn't a threat turns out Musgrove really isn't a threat to JT and then he took off following the all-star break he had the seventh highest batting average in all of major League Baseball. His last 289 plate appearances, he posted a 940 OPS. And yes, those power numbers, they were down. His slugging percentage dropped from 471 in 2021 in the first year of that two-year $34 million contract where he made the All-Star team. He had that power surge early on. He finished the year tying a career high with 27 home runs. Well, that number dropped down to 13 home runs in 2022. The slugging went from 471 to 4 38. He had an identical 278 batting average, and he still proved to be an above average bat. Last two seasons combined, he's posted a 124.5 WRC plus, so he does have that above average bat to ball skills he can still produce in the regular season, but where he has struggled is against high velocity pitching, especially in the postseason, where he's going to combine 6 for 47, hitting a buck 28. You saw him last postseason, he had multiple opportunities with runners in scoring position and he just could not get that big hit and the common theme was his inability to catch up to high velocity heaters you saw in game two of the NLDS against the Padres with Suarez on the mound the Dodgers are down four to three you had runners on the corners no outs and Justin Turner just could not get that big base hit he could not catch up to high velocity fastballs he looked overmatched and these are fastballs that are right down the middle and ones that for so many years we saw JT hit for base hits in big situations Situations. Just look at game two of the 2017 NLCS. His home run off of John Lackey, the Dodgers' first walk-off shot since Gibby in 1988, and it happened on the anniversary of that epic legendary home run. Those are the Justin Turner indelible moments that we'll never forget, but that JT isn't walking through that door. Father of time is undefeated, and you look at the postseason, he just hasn't been able to get it done. So if you compare JT to JT, 
J.D. Martinez. I think the upside of J.D. Martinez, who is a few years younger, who is going to be locked in as that designated hitter, and who has a great track record of success in October. OPS well over 900. And that, I think, is what the Dodgers need, is a guy in the middle of that order that can go up there and hit for some slug. And yes, J.D. Martinez home runs have gone down. He hit 16 bombs last season, but he also hit 43 doubles. And I think he's going to be reinvigorated in L.A. And Justin Turner, I think, is a great opportunity to reinvigorate himself on the Red Sox. Look, Justin Turner is one of the great success stories in all of Major League Baseball in the last two decades. He's a guy that was non-tendered by the Mets, and he goes to the Dodgers, and he makes a career out of it. He makes multiple all-star teams. He gets some nice deals, some nice contracts, and he really became one of the best hitters in the game. And the best version of JT is the one that is playing with a chip on his shoulder. Like the Nacho Bomb, he's the guy that plays the best when he has something to prove, and I think he's going to want to show that he still has some gas left in the tank. And I think when you're the Dodgers and you sign J.D. Martinez, my guess as to what happened was when JT didn't accept maybe a one-year $10 million deal with the Dodgers, that the Dodgers pivoted and they signed J.D. Martinez. And then if you're the Red Sox, you wanted J.D. back in Boston, but you whiffed on that. So they pivoted and they signed J.T. to that multi-year deal. Because if you're L.A., you declined Turner's $16 million club option. You gave him that $2 million buyout. And you probably said to yourself, hey, we don't want this guy back on a multi-year deal because, one, the injuries are starting to pile up. Last year, he dealt with the abdominal injury in 2021. His season ended in the NLCS because of that hamstring injury. So injuries definitely have taken their toll on Turner. It's a little knick-knack injuries, and the Dodgers realize that. And then on top of that, he doesn't offer very much positional versatility. Yes, he still played third base quite a bit last season, pretty much half third base, half DH last season. And his defensive metrics, they grade out as a negative. He is a negative defender at this stage of his career. When you look at his range, when you look at his arm, and for the Red Sox, I think the role they're going to have for him is he's going to be their primary designated hitter. Yes, he might play some third and spell Rafael Devers and allow him to play DH and keep him Mandy Fresh for a few games. Then maybe he plays some first base where he played earlier in his career, but they signed him for his bat, for his ability to hit, and that's what he would have done for the Dodgers. So essentially, the Dodgers said, hey, we can get J.D. Martinez on a one-year $10 million deal, or we can get Justin Turner on a two-year $22 million deal. We're going to go with J.D. Martinez on that one-year deal because I firmly believe the Dodgers had that DH spot earmarked for Shohei Otani. And I think Turner also is a guy that loves to play. He's a self-described baseball junkie, baseball rat, and he doesn't want that Chase Utley role. He's a guy that still is a plus hitter, and he can help a lot of teams. He doesn't want to be the end of your bench guy. And still, the Dodgers, I think, will lead a little more versatility from the end of their bench. And he just did not have a role on this team. So look, this is the Los Angeles Dodgers. There's so many iconic players, but even they didn't end their career in L.A. Duke Snyder, his contract was sold to the Mets. Fernando Valenzuela, he signed with the Angels. Ron Say, he was traded to the Cubs. Steve Garvey, he signed with the San Diego Padres. Hershiser signed with Cleveland. So we have plenty of examples of iconic Dodgers ending with other teams. And I think this one does hurt, though. This one stings, even though it didn't make sense for L.A. And I told you at the beginning of free agency that I didn't expect the Dodgers to bring him back because what I tell you, I said that there are going to be multi-year deals out there for Turner. I think he could have helped a team like the Diamondbacks who need help against left-handed pitching. They need some mentorship. They need a veteran that can help change the culture in Arizona. But instead, he goes to the Red Sox. And the Red Sox now are starting to look like the L.A. Red Sox. Look, what if I told you in 2019 that Justin Turner, Kenley Jansen, Kike Hernandez, Alex Verdugo would all be Red Sox. And on the flip side, Mookie Betts and J.D. Martinez are now on the Dodgers. So I think he saw an opportunity to play for another iconic franchise on a team that has a chance to win in the AL East. And he's playing with some guys that he knows. But I think if you're a Dodger fan, if you look at this without the emotion, without the attachment of JT, you realize that this might be the, what the Dodgers need. Look, Turner was the heart and soul of this team. He definitely was the unofficial team captain. But I think this team is in need of some fresh faces, of some some new blood, of some new voices. And I think with Turner, he's that comfort food. You know the comfort food? You know it very well. It always hits the spot. But if you 
keep eating the same thing, it starts to get stale. And I think if you look at that clubhouse, this team needs a lightning rod. They need a little bit of a shakeup. And I think this is the right time to do it. So if I did describe Justin Turner's career in three words, it'd be unofficial team captain because that's what he was in L.A. But I still think this is a great opportunity for both sides. I think Justin Turner, whenever he retires, he's going to be a part of the Dodgers culture. He is entrenched in this franchise. And I think there is a pretty decent shot that maybe you see him as the Dodgers skipper one of these days. But yeah, it was just time to go different ways. The Dodgers, they're looking to break in some youth. If you look at that third base position, Max Muncy, he took over at the third base position late in the year. You've got Miguel Vargas, who's played a lot of second base in the offseason. They're trying to work him out at second. Chris Taylor will be playing some more infield. I know a lot of you out there want to see Rafael Devers maybe traded to the Dodgers one day. So look, the reality is Justin Turner wasn't going to play a lot of spots in the infield, and you're going to use him as your primary designated hitter. And I think J.D. Martinez, when you look at his postseason success, his prodigious power, his ability to just go gap to gap, and I think the way he reunites with our Robert Van Skoyak and Moogie Betts, I think that he's going to want to really prove himself on that one-year prove-it deal. So it made a lot of sense for L.A. to get a one-year guy instead of a two-year guy that's heading into his age 40 season that was going to block some young talent and that really didn't have a clear-cut role on this team moving forward. And I see a lot of Dodger fans out there. Why didn't he accept the Chase Utley role? I think that's offensive towards Justin Turner because I think at this stage of their careers, JT has more left in the tank right now and has the ability to contribute more than Chase Utley did in his last years with the Dodgers. Like I said, he is an above-average bat. You are going to get a JT with something to prove. It's going to be red turn two on the Red Sox. So I definitely feel good for him, and I think the Dodgers this is a great opportunity for them to really close the book and just start anew with some new players out there and create a new nucleus. But when it comes to once a Dodger, always a Dodger, he is a 10 out of 10. He's got his once a Dodger, always a Dodger platinum card. I'm just going to love to see Justin Turner back whenever he's at Dodger Stadium. He did so much for this franchise. I'm telling you, in the clubhouse, you just can't measure what he did as a leader with stats and metrics and what happens in the box score. So I don't think this is going to be one of those bad breakups. I think this was amicable. I think this is going to be one of those breakups where they get back together later. I think it's going to be like Ben Affleck and J-Lo. They broke up way back in the day, and then a lot of years passed, and they got married. I think that marriage will happen when Justin Turner is the manager of the Dodgers one day. But let me know down below in the comment section, what are your thoughts? What's your reaction to JT signing with the Red Sox? Should the Dodgers have made him a better offer? Because you know if the Dodgers matched whatever he got, he'd be back in LA and it's clear they did not also tell you that John Heyman's report about the Dodgers still being in on him after signing JD Martinez that was false I'll tell you that firsthand but let me know down below my name is DMAC you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at DMAC underscore LA for all latest Dodgers news and rumors all off season long be sure to hit that subscribe button hit that notification bell and if you want to see us post even more Dodgers content smash that like button and as always think blue bleed blue and I'm out.